It's like one of the terrible things is this idea that if you study traditional stuff, that you become a traditionalist, which is nonsense. If you learn, if you study in a school where they're teaching you fundamentals, those fundamentals should not interfere with your intent once you've learned them. You should be able to take those fundamentals and do anything you want with them. And if you can't, then you weren't actually taught the fundamentals. And if you can, then you're off and running. You're not gonna be held back by a lack of understanding. Whenever I'm speaking with people that are, that are jumping onto YouTube or buying videos from pros that are painting as a way of learning how to paint, I always make the point that this type of thing, what you're about to see for the vast majority of you is theater. It kind of comes decorated as education, but it's actually theater. So I can mix colors and you can watch and you can say, oh, that red and that green and that blue and that made the color and he made the mark and it looked right. What you're not seeing is 30 years of experience that told me it was that yellow and that green and that blue in those amounts and that I could see it as I mixed it. That I took a little bit, I dragged the brush to the right so that there was a little bit less green as I was mixing. <clears throat> and then when I put the mark up here, it's what I intend because I've made marks like that for 30 years at a professional level, not, not dabbling or playing around. Um, sometimes it's experiment, but the vast majority of the time, those strokes go down and there's a paycheck attached to them on the other end. And so they have to be handled with great degree of care. And so when you're watching me work or any other professional, this is not an education per se. This might give you some ideas, but I can promise you that if you try to replicate what I'm doing here at home and you've not got all of the underpinnings that make this possible and quite a bit of experience, it'll look very simple when I do it it'll make sense and then you'll try it at home and it won't be so easy. And so the idea is not to try to catch every little thing that I'm doing, not to try to figure out well, what colors did I mix because that really doesn't matter. Um, what matters is the overarching idea. <clears throat> now typically when we start painting, when we start our learning, we, we again with Evolve, we deal in three moving parts. We have values, meaning how dark or light something is, Colors, meaning what color, like the intensity of the color, is it warm or cool? But again, just basically color is an idea. And then once we have that, and that's handled on the palette, we then move it up to the canvas and we fill in a shape and address the outer edges of it. Are they sharp edges or are they gradients? The sharp edges explain boundaries and hard corners and the gradients explain rounded form or as we get a little bit more um, down the road, distance. And so, so now you had mentioned your uh, experience at an art college. Um, do you do you think do you see other do you see other art education or art schools providing these rigid um, fundamentals and alphabet? No, no. Unfortunately, they don't. Unfortunately, they don't. The ateliers do, um, and there are a few ateliers. They've been popping up recently around the around the world. There are a few in the U.S., uh, but even even the ateliers, I would say. They take so long, and the and the the path, the path to getting to mastery, or a high a high enough level of proficiency, is so long, and it's so tedious. Um, it, you can only th those schools skim only the finest, most driven artists right off the top of the pool. People who want to be able to do what the old masters did and want to study in a place that is steeped in those traditions. And so you have these highly focused, driven individuals looking for that skill. Anyone that's not that person couldn't deal with the, 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 um, the, the tedious nature of the education, right? With, and, and colleges offer none of this. I've yet to see a college that even comes close to scratching the surface of these three very basic principles. Most of the people who are teaching in these schools don't even know they exist. It's really unfortunate. And that's, and look, that's the system. You have a lot of these teachers who are in these schools have never actually been trained. They went to school, like the teachers that are teaching now went to school while, while realism was being brushed aside. There wasn't a realist teacher in any of the schools they went to. And so how do you teach to paint what you think? There's no skill set in that. Paint blue. Paint what you feel. Well, I, I don't have the 
I don't have the language for it, right? And it's like, so, so many of these teachers, they actually don't, they don't know how things they work. They may be able to get some level of result in an abstract form, but, but, you know, you're not going to find people who really know how to break this stuff down in most colleges. There are a few, there are a few, don't get me wrong. There are some, there are some incredible people that teach, but I would say that, that, you're very unlikely to get the kind of education that you need in the fundamentals of art making at any college around the country. And look, I mean, I'm, I've lectured, I've lectured in, in pretty much all of this, the um, major colleges in New York City, Pratt, Parsons, SVA. I mean, I, I've lectured in these schools. I know a lot of the teachers, um, but the, the programs are not designed around this. It's almost like you show up at college and they expect by the time you've gotten there, you've already learned the fundamentals, even though there's no one teaching them in high school. But also when you get into high school, those teachers aren't teaching fundamentals either. There's an assumption that you've been drawing and that the basic fundamentals were, were you know, you got them through osmosis. And, and so at no point along the way, does anyone ever stop to say, well, We've never taught fundamentals. What are the, the smallest parts, the, lo the lowest common denominator of making art? All they do is they try to build on top of whatever you are already able to do. But the problem that most people have is that they're trying to build on top of like quicksand. They don't have anything to hold up the structure that's being, with, that they're trying to build on top of it, which is why people hit these glass ceilings and they, they just can't get over them. They can't, they can't get their skill to a place beyond a certain level because it's not adding the next skill. It's going back and shoring up the foundations which were never put in place. And so everything they build, you know, you build a tower, you put one floor on and the, the, weight, the weight is sustained by the quicksand. You put the second floor on and it sinks one floor. Well, now you're still at the same height. You put another one on and this leads to a level of frustration. So many artists deal with, I mean, I. I talk to artists all the time. I, I'm constantly talking to artists who, who they come to me because they're struggling and they're doing the work. This is the worst part. They're committing the time and energy. They're doing the work and they're, they're still not getting the result. I mean, what a terrible thing. You clock the hours, you put in the energy, you burn the candle at both ends, you, you open every book, you watch every video you can, and you think you've got all the information, but nothing seems to click. Yeah, you get lucky from time to time. It's a terrible place to be. And it comes down to these ridiculously simple three moving parts. But no one's teaching them. No one's breaking them down. There's an assumption that we already have them when we show up wherever we're being taught, at whatever age we are. Marsha Mill said, I took a class that was for Impressionism and got so lost and confused after the first semester I dropped out. It was a year-long class. It was all in the way the teacher approached things and the lack of explaining that got me. I became so confused I stopped painting. I'm not wanting to start over from, from scratch but having a hard time. I'm not afraid to put paint to canvas because of this class. I want to just forget what I was taught. It's been a very big struggle. Thank you for your videos. They are helping. Well, I'm glad. I'm sorry, you know, unfortunately what your experience is, is not atypical. Um, it's unfortunate, you know, if you get the wrong teacher to start, um, they can they can set you on a path for all of your work, for all of your commitment. They set you on a path to failure, and I, I don't you know I don't think any of them do it intentionally. I think I think for the most part they 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 think that they're helping, um, but not everybody is cut out to teach this stuff, um, and. You know, not everybody, even if, even if they're cut out to teach it, may not have the skills. You know, it's not an easy thing. When somebody sets out to teach, it's not enough to know what you're doing. You have to be able to, you have to be open-minded enough to not lock your students into a style, right? So what you teach has to strip away style. It has to strip away the teacher's opinion and boil it down to the nuts and bolts facts, right? Values... They're like math, right? They're either right or they're wrong, right? Um, so, you know, a, teacher's, a teacher coming up and saying, oh, you know, I like this. Well, that, that doesn't help. Like your opinion is one, and is, so it's seven billion people in the world. It's nice that you like it. Is it right? 
are my values correct? Are my colors correct? Are the edges where they belong? Are they handled properly, right? That's, that's an education. To be able to say, that value is in the wrong place, let me show you how you figure that out. That color is too cool, or it's too chromatic, or it's, let me show you how you make sense of it. I wasn't looking at the painting and saying, I like this painting, or I don't like this painting. I like what you did here, or I don't like what you did here. The hell cares what my opinion is? My opinion's irrelevant. Technically, that's like in a math class. Imagine a teacher coming over and your answer to a, to a calculation is wrong but saying they like the way you did it. So what? It's still wrong. Your opinion doesn't matter as a teacher. It shouldn't. If you have to impart your opinion in a critique of a piece of work, you're not teaching. At least in my opinion, you're not. Now, you can go through all the technical stuff and then say, well, you know, some of your mistakes are actually quite pretty. There, there, there's some nice, you know, things going on here that were intuitive to you, but you have to filter that intuitive stuff through these filters of value, color, and edge to be able to get the most out of what you're doing, right? And so, you know, you just want to make sure, like, you know, if you're going and you're getting an education, the teacher's opinion, whether it's me or someone else, shouldn't matter and it should never factor in to your education. Liking something or not liking something is not a teacher's job. That's a buyer's job. That's somebody who wants to buy a piece of art. I like this, I don't like this. But they're the only person, you know, friends and family, people. But if you're looking at an education, opinions from your teacher should have nothing to do. They have no business in the education, right? Because look, I mean, if you have somebody who hates abstract art and you make a really good, solid, quality piece of abstract art, the teacher's not gonna like it. But who cares what they like? It comes back to the same thing. Is my technique sound? Once I know my technique is sound, I'll go create what I wanna create with my voice. You can like it or not like it, it doesn't matter, right? As long as I have enough people that like it that are willing to buy it, I make a living at it but my technique has to be sound. And you don't find, you, there's just not a lot of that out there where, where teachers are concerned. Their opinions are a big part of their critique and their experience is the vast majority of what they teach. But you can't teach experience. You can only teach the technical knowledge. The experience has to be earned by each individual artist by standing in front of an easel and working on those fundamentals as they're taught technically. Ed is asking, do you still have the apprenticeship program? If I had stayed one more year, that would have been my mission. Yes, yes. Well, it's, it's, um, it's just a full-time program. But yes, we, we do have it. I've got a student in it right now, um, Matt, who's doing an incredible job. All right, so you can see this about six months into his education. Right? Um, and this one, this one, he actually did all the photography, he did everything from, from the beginning. Like, I didn't have anything to do with this. Is the apprenticeship program online or in person? Oh, no, it's, it's in person. But I have a full-time program here at the school. Evolve mimics the full-time program. The education's the same. It's not, it's not diminished by being online. We work very, very hard to make sure that that, that, that is the case. That, that if you're doing the program, if you're doing Evolve, you're getting the same education that you would here at the school. The difference between being here at the school and being, uh, being on your own at home is that you have, to, you have to do the work. Like you have to get up and do the work every day. Where here, I can stand over you with a whip if you're not doing what you're supposed to do and you're not living up to your potential. Um, and that goes back to what I was talking about yesterday with having a coach. Um, there's a reason that professional teams have coaches and it's because it's hard to be a self-starter every day. But if you want this badly enough, you will be a self-starter. And you'll be able to take this from, knowing, from doing stick figures up to doing top-tier professional level work. I mean, in, in a very, very small amount of, of committed hours. I mean, we do our blocks one through four, which is up to like professional level rendering, is only 350 hours of time. That's not a lot of hours. I mean, when you break that down, it's seven hours a week for under a year. That's not a lot of time to go from knowing nothing 
to being able to produce professional level paintings. That you're not, you're not winding up with something that is wildly different than what you hope to get. And it's not that you're just hoping, you know how to get the result you want and you have the technical ability to get the result just by using your process, right? And so, but the, you know, with the Evolve program, we're talking 350 hours from start to finish to get through the first four blocks on average. Again, everyone's gonna be a little bit different, but on average, that's only seven hours a week. Like if you were going to college, you'd be committing six hours in a painting class and then probably another six hours in homework every week for one class, right? So that's 12 hours. If you're putting 12 hours a week into our program, You'll be done with painting in six months. You'll be producing professional level paintings in six months. And your college, you don't do it for one year. There's no college is giving you professional level results in a painting class in one year. In four years, you'll be lucky if you have some idea of which end of the brush to use properly. Right? And so if you're, if you're looking at six months at 12 hours a week, if you can clock that kind of time, you can be able to start making your money back start making money on your work, probably well before you even hit that six month mark. It's a nice place to be. Imagine a college telling you that you could actually earn back your tuition that you're paying for the college based on the education they're giving you while you're still getting the education. Yeah, most artists can't even pay back what they got, to, you know, what they paid for their college even after they get out of college. It takes, what, 20 or 30 years to do that. With the Evolve program, you could actually, if you're conscientious in your work and you do what we show you, you could make back what you pay for the program while you're doing the program. Not immediately. You'd have to be able to float the tuition until you got to the point where you had those skills. But again, at, at, at 15 hours a week, you're five months to complete the first four blocks. And trust me when I tell you, you will have the skills at the end of that time. If you've done what we've shown you and you've taken great care, you've been patient with your work, you will have the skills to be able to make, make back your money. Russ Lindsay said, I would think seeing and knowing instructors in person has a major impact and personalizes the learning experience. Yes, yes. Um, and like in reference to, like we kind of get this a lot, um, the difference between like the online, the Evolve program being here at the school. Um, the Evolve program, you have so much interaction with instructors and other artists in the program. I mean, you could, you could literally never be alone while you're making art. You jump in, we have chat rooms, I have office hours, Piper, who's runs the, who runs the homework team, has office hours. If you need to speak with somebody, everybody's always available. So you're never without the support that you need, and the idea is that we built out the, the aspects of the Evolve program to have a community that feels like the school. The idea of the program is to not feel like you're alone at home working, but that you're part of a community and that you have, you, that you have the impression of, of absolute access to the teacher the same way you would here in the school. Yeah, and this is, like I said, this is a kid who's been with me since he was like maybe seven years old, six years old. Comes in every Sunday, goes to work, it's pretty quiet just does his thing and I mean just spectacular.